What's up YouTube? Today we are talking about how to track your calories when you are eating out and you don't know actually how many calories you're eating. So I'm with my buddy Ranbir Sangera. He is the owner of San Jose Barbell, the best gym in San Jose. One of the best gyms in the entire country. I love it. Really incredible gym with Al J. Resengit? How do you say it? Resengit. Resengit. Um, <laughs> Amazing, amazing gym. If you are in the California area, San Jose specifically, you gotta go. But Ranbeer is a genius with nutrition. And he, one of the things that he's incredible at is being able to track meticulously without actually tracking meticulously. So I want him to explain exactly what his meal is and how he's gonna track it so you can learn how you, how you can do it too. So I'm literally just gonna put the camera on him and you can go. So you tell me if it's on you, right? Yeah. All right. So, a um, couple of things. One of the things that well, first you guys say nice to meet you. <laughs> just jump right in. Uh, nice to meet you guys, Rambeer Sangera guys, aka Guafather. <laughs> uh, but anyways, um, there's a couple of things that I think about when I'm tracking stuff that maybe doesn't have a label, maybe doesn't have, um, maybe it's not on the menu, like how many calories they have which is actually helpful because a lot of places will just put the calorie total and that's helpful, that's a good starting point. But so what I will normally do is I will break down the, the meal in terms of like the ingredients and then I'll just search in my fitness pal that ingredient and what I think. So what do you have right here? Walk so, us through it. Is the camera on that so you can see? Yeah, so we got some avocado toast here, right? So, so that's like on top, of, you got avocado, and you got the toast. Yes. Got it. So what I will do, so like, if you can see, there's, there's maybe a tablespoon or two tablespoons. You don't need to be like a hundred percent accurate. Um, tilt that a little bit. So you don't need to be like on the dot, right? So I'll just say there's two tablespoons of avocado on there. I'll go to my fitness pal, search it, two tablespoons, boom, done. Um, like, I'm not going to be off by more than, you know, like, th there's clearly not six tablespoons here. Um, and so being close enough is good, and that's a great starting point. Um, and, and you can always overestimate, right? I could say, okay, there's three if I, if I was, like, cutting, if I was in a deficit, and I wanted to be sure that I stay under my calorie limit, I'll say three. Um, then the toast. Most toast is going to be pretty similar. So I'll, I'll search, you know, whatever slice of toast I'll have at home, or a wheat, whole wheat bread, right? And I'll put one slice in there. Done. How, how much is that per slice? Do you know? Uh, one slice is about maybe 110 calories. Got it. Okay. Ish. Cool. So then, usually, then we got kale here. Um, with with most vegetables, unless it's like the starchy, lots of sugar. Um, so what are some starchy vegetables? So, you know, if you have like carrots you got um, peas peas corn, corn um sweet eggplant potatoes, sweet so potato yeah. uh those types of things you'll want to track those but like spinach celery kale uh, even broccoli i don't bother with it um just because it's just not you're not gonna eat significant amounts of calories with that unless you're eating like you know Fucking yeah, this massive, massive size. Yeah, to the point um, of discomfort. Like, yeah. That's not a healthy relationship. Yeah, yeah. it's not going to happen. Um, so that's another thing. Like, don't worry about things that are never going to happen. Right? You're not ever going to eat 500 calories of broccoli. Right? I don't know. Unless you eat 500 I mean, no, calories. What I will say is this: um, when you really dive into eat disordered eating habits, sometimes there'll be people who are so scared of being hungry that they'll literally eat pounds of food, like whether it's cabbage, which is normally very low calorie, um, broccoli, cauliflower, and that's a, it's a disordered eating habit where sometimes they'll fill up on hundreds of calories worth of, of vegetables that otherwise wouldn't matter. So number one, I agree with Ranbir 100% for most people, you shouldn't be focused, that's majoring in the minors when you're really focusing on like how much kale you're gonna eat. But if you're meticulously tracking your calories and you're not making progress week after week after week after week and you're also eating a ton of vegetables and you're not tracking them, 
you should start to, you don't have to track them meticulously, but at least be aware of them and count them towards, in some sense, towards your total if you're not making progress. If you're making progress and not tracking them, don't fix it if it's not broken. But if you are not making progress and you are eating a ton of them, that's when you have to start thinking about it. Yeah, 100%. Um, there's, uh, you know, you always have to take into context what your individual situation is. Um, but uh, you always have to take into context what your own individual situation is. But, you know, generally, you know, this this amount of kale right here. Yeah, that's like nothing. That's nothing. That's nothing. Um, and then I'll like that I'll, would be enough to like round up to the nearest hundred like if you're yeah. at like 75 or something You'd yeah. go up to a hundred from that but like it's it wouldn't be like I'm gonna add 200 calories to it No, yeah, and, and that's a great way to do it So if you if you wanted to add like a hundred calories from that vegetable great, you know Especially if you're in a if you're trying to cut and you're trying to lose uh, body fat um, Then you know you want to be a little bit more on top of that and then you'll look at well, what is in this? This one I think is covered in like um, like vinegar or something. Yeah. So that's gonna have zero calories. Um, you'll know. You can always ask. Um, but generally, if it's something that you can tell is a little bit more rich, you know, if it's a dressing, if it's sweet, it's gonna have some more calories. So I'll add that. So like an example would be, um, let's say it was covered in like Thousand Island. Thousand, yeah. Thousand Island. Great. You know, then you just search Thousand Island, um, uh, which is surprisingly high calorie. Super high. Well, it's very easy to underestimate that. I would say, yeah, actually, yeah, it's super high in calories. It's like fifty calories a tablespoon or something like that, or maybe. I think it might be more. It's crazy. It's I think crazy. it's like eighty or ninety. Yeah, yeah. And, and people don't realize how small a tablespoon is. No, and yeah, that's the thing. So like, you got to remember, like, a tablespoon is about a tablespoon is about <laughs> a thumb, right? So um, then I'll add that in. I'll search uh, if it was Thousand Island. I would go, you know, I'll probably look for Craft Thousand Island. Um, search for like the big brands uh, because they'll be accurate. And then I'll put a tablespoon of that. This one I'm not going to worry about because it doesn't have anything uh, that has calories in it. Then I'll go to the egg. That one is super simple. I'll go on uh, my Fitness Pal and search one egg. Pop that in there. An egg is gonna be about 60, 70 calories. Then we got this uh, lovely ensemble of fruit. Um, and that's gonna be simple again. Like if you wanted to, you could go to like um, a popular restaurant and do one of their little fruit cups. So I, I know McDonald's has a fruit cup and I'll search that and then I'll add small fruit cup. Um, but again, I'll look at what things actually have uh, significant calories in here. I know there's a... Uh, there's pineapple in there and cantaloupe. Um, these, those blueberries, I mean, that's probably gonna be like 20, 30 calories, maybe. So I, you can assign just um, calories to this. So I'll, I would probably say this bowl, this small bowl is about 30 grams of carbs. Okay. Do you agree? 30, 40. It's funny, I always just go by, by calories, so like I wouldn't even know grams of carbs, but like... So then, uh, then I would, and the reason I say that is because this is a little hack that I use when I can't find something. Uh, because all food is going to be made up of what? Carbs, fats, and proteins. So I'll go in my fitness pal and search gram carbohydrate. And so you can add how many carbs you think it is and it'll do, so you know, if you just put one gram of carbs, it'll add four calories, Got it. right? So I'm, I'm thinking this is about 30, 40 grams of carbs. So you multiply that by four, and then you get the number of calories. Yeah, so it's gonna show up in my fitness pal as, you know, 120 calories. Got it. So. Which is important to note, by the way, because a lot of people, listen, like, the whole idea that people should be scared of fruit because it's inherently gonna make you fat is ridiculous. Silly. But there still are calories in it. Yeah. So you still have to be aware of it, which yeah. is important. So that's the thing with fruit. I don't estimate because it does have more calories than you know your broccoli or your uh, spinach and your kales. Um, fruit you definitely want to try. So if you just had to look at this right now, I'm gonna put you on the spot. If you had to look okay. at this meal, what what range of calories would you say this meal is gonna be? Okay. We'll say seventy. We'll say one hundred and twenty. Um, so 190, we'll add 
at about 30 there, 220. Um, about 100 for the bread, say, say 350 and then two tablespoons of avocado. Uh, I'd say this is about 450. Got it. Ish. 450 calories. So, yeah. first of all, Ramdir, thank you for doing this. Where can people find you if they want to follow you? Uh, best place to find me is uh, Instagram at rambir.sangera or if you just search r-a-n-b-i-r dot s-a-n-g-h-e-r -E got it i'll put that in the notes yeah. too um and what, what's your youtube handle uh san jose barbell san jose barbell yeah. got it so first of all thank you rambir for doing that that was awesome uh and one thing i just want to touch on is when i at the very end it was like what would you put this meal at and he was just Da, 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 like going like rapid fire figuring out how much was in each thing that's the quintessence of of being able to have the skill set of tracking your calories where when you're first learning it it's tough it's really hard you have to take more time you have to weigh your food you have to look it up now he doesn't have to do that and it doesn't take as much time because he's done it so much a lot of people will say, I oh, don't know, calorie counting is not for me because I don't want to live and, live and die by the scale and by measuring it. It's like, that's okay, but that's sort of essentially being like, you know, school's not for me because I don't want to study and go to school. And like, that's okay, but you're missing out on a lot of benefits. And once you get over the learning curve, or sort of like being like, I don't want to deadlift because I don't want to learn the right technique for deadlifting. It's like, it's gonna take you some time. You're not gonna get it like that. But once you do, you just it's natural. You do it over and over and over again. So if you are hesitant to calorie count because you don't want it to take over your life, they're not, they're not, it's not like they have to go hand in hand. Taking over your life and calorie counting are not one and the same. They can become one and the same if you become obsessive with it. But just like Rambeer said, sometimes you're gonna have, you, like you should round up. Other times you can have a range. You can like, we're not at McDonald's, but he's like, you could use the McDonald's cup. Like it's, it's all about just being a little bit creative and thinking outside the box and not really being so focused and meticulous on this like every like, single detail because that's when it gets to be too much. Just doing the best you can with what you have, but still giving it a lot of effort because in the long run, that's gonna help you be an intuitive dieter, a flexible dieter. And the only way to become a flexible dieter is to first have the skill set of this, right? So a lot of people who say they're, fle they, they're flexible dieters but they don't count calories, it's great, but they used to count calories <laughs> and they had that skill set and then they were able to look at these meals and know within like 50 to 75 calories how much is in it because they already have that skill set. So if you haven't done it just because you've been avoiding it, Give it a shot, I would say 30 days. Just do 30 days of tracking as much as you can, and I guarantee you by the end of the 30 days, you'll be better off than you were before. Thank you so much, I hope this video helped. Thank you, Ranbeer. You're welcome. And uh, I'll talk to you soon.